All right, welcome back. Just before, the, well, let's do the hot topics. This is kind of part of the hot topics. That's the hot topics. I was hearing that John Travolta's wife, um, I think she died, oh, there it is, from breast oh, cancer. No. 57 years old. Um, <sighs> Kelly Preston. Apparently it was a a couple of years back there also that she had with Miss Castle. So, even though we don't know him personally, well, I don't, so condolences to John yeah. Travolta. Terrible. Yep, not good news. And I was also reading that there's Nelson Mandela, his daughter also um, died in hospital. I think she was about 57 or 59 also. So, mm -hmm. not great news. What's the first hot topic? Um, not great news here either. <clears throat> a public health crisis, no work for doctors, says this article. Um, hmm. Hospitals reportedly not employing medical professionals due to budgetary constraints caused by COVID-19. Irony of this is that people are getting sick and need health care. Very health crisis that Jamaica is battling has reportedly pressured the country's resources so badly that it is now causing a number of doctors to be out of work. So in spite of the country's need for healthcare workers to fight COVID-19, apparently budgetary constraints caused by the outbreak have forced several hospitals not to be able to employ new doctors. Among the doctors affected are six specialists at the UHWI and senior house officers who, after completing medical school and a two-year internship, offered posts in hospitals across the Southeast Regional Health Authority. However, the Gleaner is reporting that even after successful interviews at the institution, several doctors are still awaiting confirmation of their contracts by the Ministry of Health and Wellness and CIRA, which is the region that is most affected. Some doctors reported that they started working at hospitals, but their services were later terminated and an explanation given that they could not be accommodated under current financial budgets. This is incredible news, yep. especially uh, now that I think another batch of doctors was just um, graduated from the UHWI. So, or was it lawyers? Doctors are lawyers. Anyway, I was bad news, bad news. Yeah, I was doctors. reading and one doctor said, I've been calling Sarah, which is the oversight body of the two hospitals, and I've been told that they're working on it and is waiting a directive from the ministry. However, unofficially, I was told that because of budgetary constraints, they may have to wait a few months because of all the money was spent on COVID-19 related activities. Then he says, they bring in doctors from Cuba, but they're saying they can't afford to pay their own doctors. How is that? How is that you can afford to pay them, but not us? So d does this doctor know that that's the case? That that's the arrangement with Cuba? Well, I don't know. Well, the um, health minister is saying he is not aware of the situation. No. That's interesting. Um, said he would speak to the PS. Uh, the response is not forthcoming up to press time. Um, Strange. So if, if that is and you very... would think, especially now, that we would need well, all that's hands the point, on deck. Is that they need yeah. them, but they can't afford to hire them. They is can't the pay point, them. Is the irony. Wow. So, <clears throat> not good. By the way, on Tuesday, Dr. Tufton announced in Parliament that of the approximately six billion budgeted by the government to tackle the coronavirus, so far they have spent 3.8 billion. There you go. Good news also that uh, last 24 hours we never had a confirmed case and we had some recoveries, so that's fantastic. Didn't six, we have some cases six. over the weekend? We, didn't? we did, but last the last 24 hours we did. We did. And how many did we have before that? I think it was five the night before and like six the night before that. But they were all Important seemingly cases. people who have come in. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So we now have 600 persons recovered and uh, 750 COVID-19 cases. The second one says marital law, marital rape law looms. Um, About time. Married women, and I'm quoting here from the Senator Johnson Smith, married women who are raped by their husbands will no longer have to fulfill certain conditions to qualify for legislative protection. The committee recommended that once a woman has withheld her consent in a relationship, irrespective of whether it appears in marriage or not, it is to be considered rape. 
It was recognized that rape is an act of violence and marriage is an institution which must be fostered in a context of love and mutual respect. When was that recognized? I mean, yep. okay. This is law late. Yeah. I wonder how, what it is like around the world. And I think this, this comes from people who are thinking that they own people, you know, because me and I are married, so my own, my own you, you are mine. All right, the next one. Can we hurry up with this law, please? Yep. Because I actually thought it was in already for some strange reason. All right. But then, but you do have some people who are saying you, you know, you can't rape your wife. Um, you, you can rape your wife. You have rape people who are rape. saying that just, just because you are married, it cannot be considered rape, which is kind of crazy. But <laughs> what's the next one? Uh, okay, so we're heading into crime. Yep. Um, shields. Yep. Smart shields. Yep. Zip. Is saying that it will be 10 years before Zoso's success is evident. Uh, he says, security expert Mark Shields does, that it will take at least a decade for us to start seeing signs of irreversible change in crippling crime under the zones of special operation. The overall plan, Shields says, must include long term initiatives to create jobs, improve education, and teach people some basic social skills to prevent a return to the cycle of violence. This cannot be a one-year wonder. Irreversible social and economic change may take at least 10 years, Shields said. He said crime and corruption is a disease like COVID-19 and needs to be tackled effectively by joined up governments working with a wide range of partners with a common goal, and that goal is to reduce crime and disorder. There's a former JDF corporal, it says here, with over two decades of service under his belt, and he spoke to the gleaner. Um, he said the Zozos and states of emergency um, was a waste of money and time. So he said he pointed to the lack of seizures of illegal guns in flankers in Montego Bay. He says, and I quote, in 2010, we launched an SOE in Montego Bay, the flankers area to be precise, and that community is a place known to have high-powered weapons. We would sit in the army base in Montego Bay, right below the community, and would see men there all with rifles. You launch a state of emergency, you go up there, and for the period of the state of emergency, you find, say, five rifle, rifles out of nearly 5,000. And when you take that five, another thousand is coming in. How do we benefit from that? He says, from my vantage point, these SOEs and Zozos unwittingly have become a haven for criminals who smuggle weapons out of the communities, commit their crimes, sneak them back in and are safe within that space, given the presence of the security forces. Wow. Well, he's challenging critics of the Zoso strategy to present a better alternative. He said, while the murder rate and the number of shootings have not decreased as much as he would like, gains have been made in some parts of the island as a result of the measures. Yeah. All right. Last one. Weather field in Florida, Florida Whoa. is... Why wow. Florida has shattered the national record. This wow. is yesterday for the largest single day increase in positive coronavirus cases in any state since the beginning of the pandemic, adding more than 15,000 cases as its daily average death toll continued to also rise. According to the State Department of Health Statistics, 15,299 people tested positive for a total of 269,811 cases, 45 deaths being recorded. Cali had the previous record of daily positive cases, which were 11,694, that was on Wednesday. New York had 11,571 on April 15. But Florida is saying, nope, let's outdo everybody. I heard the Florida governor on Saturday saying that the increase in cases is as a result of the increase in testing. So it's not really like anything to really yeah. worry. Well, and that's what some people are saying yeah. that the numbers would be higher because you're not, you know, you're not doing enough tests. Some people are even suggesting that right here in Jamaica, that the numbers. Yes, no, but the numbers are increasing because more people are getting infected. Yeah, man. So don't be tricked, guys, yep. by, you know, and Florida is, you know, Kingston 21. Yep. You know, so we... Be careful. It's... All right. We're seeing that they said, um, I think it's, it's on this, this one. Prominent Jamaican social worker is one of the debts in Florida. Oh, no. All right. 
um, time for News in 5, so we're going to go for a break and when we come back, Shane will have the News in 5. Stay with us, please. Can I see that?